this week we are finally going to do a project that I wanted to do it's not for a client so basically I designed this from scratch and I built this to exactly what I wanted it to be starting off this week's project as we start any other project we're going to collect our wood from our local kiln supplier this specific slab has been in the oven for around about six months and the moisture content in this was under 11% which is perfect for working with wood. Then I head over to one of my buddies, Yaku Fraser, which has a massive CNC machine. I think it's like six meter by like three meter wide or something. I am going to leave his details down below if you guys are in the Pretoria Gauteng area and you have some slabs you want to flatten you can definitely go out and support him for us it's a definite because it saves us a ton of time with this massive router i think it took like a total of 25 to 30 minutes to flatten this slab both sides and this is how it looks after it's been flattened this specific wood species is called matumi it's only sourced from the country i'm from south africa it's absolutely beautiful and the reason why we like this wood is it's just got so much character it's absolutely beautiful moving to the next step in our project and that's basically to cut my slab square well more or less square we took a line down in the center of the slab and we squared that off to cut our ends of our table more or less square so everything looks in proportion then I headed over to one of my buddies. He also has a massive CNC machine. He flattens all my epoxy tables for me. And he also has a laser machine. So with a lot of trial and errors, we managed to design the perfect bow tie jig. I didn't want to go for something outrageous. I love the look of the traditional bow tie. And we are busy playing around with the jigs. I don't know if you guys would be interested in purchasing something like this. Um, we are in the process of making a few. Giving it out to some local woodworkers to try it out and see if it works for them. So if you guys are interested, leave me a comment down below if you would buy something like this. And you might be watching this video and there might not be any links or details down below. Just make sure to keep on checking because it might be live within the next two to three months or six to seven or eight months to come. That all depends on if there's enough interest, if something like this will sell. Now I'm just busy placing my bow ties in the direction and the position I think it's gonna look best. And I didn't really want to go for the traditional epoxy because as you guys saw there was a massive crack in the slab and I really really didn't want to do epoxy and you guys do know we do a ton 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 of epoxy projects and by the way if you guys do want to learn how to work with epoxy how to build DIY resin tables I've got an online epoxy masterclass that's going to teach you exactly how to build the perfect epoxy table the first time. You know, in fact, let me show you guys what it's all about. We've been building epoxy tables for many years now, and we are finally going to share all our methods and techniques with you. My name is Greg and I am going to show you how to build the perfect epoxy table. I'm going to show you all the tools you need, exactly how to use them and show you some tips and tricks down the line. Everyone thinks you need to cast your second layer of epoxy once your first layer has set. That's not true. You need to cast your second layer of epoxy once your first layer has become tacky. This masterclass has been designed for all woodworkers, from your beginner all the way up to your experts.
click on this video or in the description down below for more information. So after I placed my bow ties in the position I wanted it to be, it's time to cut the actual bow tie. And this is where we had our first jig with the bigger bow ties. And using some double-sided tape, to make sure once this bow tie jig has been placed on top of the wood that it's not going to move at all. I think there were some places where I actually had my pony clamps on top of it to make sure it's not moving. If this jig is going to move one millimeter, your male bow ties will not, well, it's going to fit, but there's going to be a gap. And, you know, there was one bow tie. I do have to admit one of the smaller ones where the jig moved but we sorted it out with some well DIY wood filler. We are using the Festool OF 1400 router and what makes this bow tie jig complicated for us is to make it universal for every single person to use because the reducer that we ordered for this specific router it's not the same as all the other brands out there. And this is going to make the jig a little bit difficult to design and manufacture for all routers to be used out there. Before I am going to insert my male bow tie, I am going to apply wood glue on the inside and on my physical bow tie. That's to make sure that I am going to have wood glue all over on the inside of the hole we just cut. And I specifically went with a different color type of wood species, then rather to go with the same wood species as the table we are building. The wood species for the bow ties is called lead wood. In Afrikaans, it's called harde kool. It's a extremely, extremely hard wood. And I actually wanted to go for a really dark wood. So the feature can really, really stand out once the table is finished. So when cutting my bow ties, I really didn't want to go and cut in too deep. So you'll see the bow ties not sitting flush with the top of my table that's why i was just scared when cutting the bow tie that i was going to cut too deep then we're going to have level issues at the end of the day So we started getting into a rhythm with cutting the bow tie. So we will use a, I think it's a six millimeter flush drum bit. And we will only use the outside guide of the router jig. We will only cut the slot, as you will see now, on the ends. Then afterwards, we will come with a bigger router bit and cut the insides out. We find that this method was working very faster for us in cutting the bow ties and this is a time consuming process and you really 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 do have to take your time otherwise you're going to make a mistake luckily for us i'm not too sure how many bow ties we cut but we didn't make one mistake and this was the one negative point of the router we used you can't really see the bit I know it sounds like I'm complaining with the white bread under my arms, but we managed to cut all the bow ties, so the router does work.
to make sure my bow ties actually is flush with my tabletop i took out my festool rotex in rotex mode with 80 grit sandpaper made this job really easy and it was really fast i think it took me a total of like five minutes or something to remove that one millimeter of material and it sits absolutely flush and to be honest i would really really like your honest opinion on what do you guys think of this bow tie table i would really really love to interact with you so leave me a comment down below what do you guys think what would you have done differently do you think it looks stupid or would you have filled it with epoxy or just let me know what you guys think Starting with the sanding process on our table. I already sanded my table down with a Rotex machine in 80 grit. Then I'm going to move to my finishing sander, the ETS-5. I am going to sand my table up all the way to 220 grit because we're going to use Odis Oil for this project. Now Odis Oil allows you to sand to higher grits. That's why we sand our table all the way up to 220 grit. And there you can see, we're using Odis oil for this project. And Odis oil has just got so much benefits in using this oil. Now we are not sponsored, please don't get me wrong. We absolutely, absolutely love using this product. You can use it for indoors, outdoors, any leather clothing piece or couches you have it's food safe so if you want to build chopping boards you can do that all that in one little jar that's just absolutely amazing we absolutely love using odis oil So I'm not going into too much detail on the steel base, but I just want to mention to you guys, that's what I absolutely love about my small woodworking shop. We started a steel section as well, so we do all our steel work ourselves. We literally design, manufacture, build, cut every single thing a client asks for. We custom manufacture everything in our small little shop. Now, before I'm going to leave you guys with the final product, make sure you support us by liking this video. Let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of this table. Hit the like button and I'll see you guys next week with another super cool video. Thanks guys. Cheers.